Hi guys, it's Owen from farfrey.org again. Uh, this time around I'm going to show you how to add a, a basic crew um, into the game and, and start using some of the, the basic controls. So let's imagine you're about to start off a game. So this is where I left off last time. I'm still in observer mode. So here I want to flick in and be uh, one of the players. So I want to uh, join another side and say player one. That now gives me control of the player one control. So you can see this button became available, so I'll open up this. So this is player one sideboard. This is a, a, a private uh, place where player one can put their models. Player two can't see that. So this is a good staging area for adding your models in before you uh, actually add them to the board as you're, as you're constructing your, your crew. Uh, so let's construct a basic crew. Um, so I'm going to create a guild crew. So I'm going to grab in Lady Justice and grab some of the minions. So I shall grab in the judge. And I'll just grab one Death Marshal. Actually, let's just grab two. Okay, so let's just say that I'm happy with the crew. If you click the Objects button again, that can, uh, dialog disappears with access to the models. All right, so I've got two Death Marshals who look quite the same here. Um, there's a number of different ways you might want to distinguish them. So, for example, if they had different effects and spells that you want to keep track of. So one of the things that you might often want to do is just rename them. Uh, so you've access to that uh, label here. Sorry, bit of a brain fart there. Uh, so I want to call this guy Death Marshal One. They will change, and that's fine. The other thing you, you can do is, is add wounds to models. Um, so often you want to add numbers to them, and here we can increment up numbers for the appropriate number of wounds, decrement them back down. Uh, so that gives you some control. The way to do that is select them and use the N and B buttons. N increments them up, B decrements them down. So quite a, a handy kind of marker and control. Um, okay, so the models are on the, the sideboard. Let's bring them into the, the play area itself. So I dragged across all of them and selected them and have now dropped them into the play area. Move them around a little bit. You can see that the move, as the models were moved, that this kind of shadow effect has appeared uh, around the rim. This is a handy way of keeping track of which models have been moved during your turn. If you want to mark a model as unmoved, select it and control M and that removes that marked uh, moved uh, model. There's also a button up here in the control bar that allows you to turn off all of the movement. So basically at the end of the turn you click that and all the models return to their, their original state uh, as not moved. Uh, and that's again quite a handy mechanism to ensure you've um, activated all of your models. So that's the basics of, of getting a crew onto the board and let's look at some of the, the basics of movement. So I'm going to take Lady J and move her up into the top left corner here. So the first thing you notice, you, you can drag a model. So that's one way of moving them, obviously. And there's a tape measure, so uh, tape measure there. You can drag, so say I want to move Lady Justice four inches. Drag distance there. Now, I'm I'm left-clicking and dragging and holding the left click. I haven't released it yet. You notice it says range four zero. So the numbering is slightly strange. That's four inches. Four five is four and a half inches. Release there, and that's the distance. Um, I place that down again. So there, save. That's fine. And you, and then you can move Lady Justice wherever you need her to be. I find that the tape measures are fine for measuring range, but generally you'll have a good idea of how far you want to move the model. So just rotate them using the arrow keys. So left and right key to rotate left and right, and the up and down keys move one inch at a time. So it's one, two, three, four inches as you wish. You also have finer controls, so let's have a look at the, the more detailed movement. So there's up and down an inch, control and an arrow moves at half inch, uh, so that's quite useful. Uh, you also have other rotation controls other than moving the left and right, so left and right moves at 10 degrees, control left, control right moves at 5 degrees, uh, rotates at 5 degrees, so really quite useful. There are the basics. Other things that are worth knowing are how to turn on, on and off different melee ranges. And you can see we've got melee ranges and auras. These are basically for when you need to overlap different distances that you want to, to measure. Um, so control alt one gives me a one inch zone, but that's obviously that's not for, good for Lady J. So there's the two inch uh, reach on, on her melee weapon. Uh, and that's quite useful. But if they have you know a six inch pulse, so in this instance, control alt six, turn that on. 
control 6 turns on a different colored one so if you wanted to turn on the pulse and at the same so that's control 6 turned on that one control alt 2 there's our melee range so really quite useful and quite powerful uh, to turn on and off and, and see the different ranges and, uh, of pulses and, and Malik uh, engagements. Other controls that are really worth noting here are the ability to turn on different status effects. So there's a whole range of different effects that are useful in the game here for turning on and off fast and slow and all the different things that can impact your model. So let's let's turn on fast in this instance. And you saw F was the, the shortcut key. Now it's slow. Now it's turned off. This can come a little, become a little bit cluttered depending on the number of effects. So she's fast, and let's turn on a couple of others. So let's raise the poison. So and if you keep hitting W, it'll keep incrementing it up depending on the degree of poison. Um, and you could have effects on other models. So I'm going to turn on one on the Death Marshal, who's become slow, on the Judge, who's poisoned as well. And sure, let's set one of the other ones on fire. Um, so give him burning, and increase the burning. So you can have quite a lot of these effects. This button here, the status button over uh, on the, the side here, you click that, it will turn off all of the status views. So you can see them toggling on and off there. So it's a, an interesting tool for decluttering the board. So they're the basics of movement, um, the basics of controlling your models, uh, changing their rotation. If a model is killed or sacrificed, select them and control D just the same way as deleting a, a piece of terrain or anything else, and they're gone, they're deleted. Or if, if you don't wish to do that, and there's a nice undo button up the top, or if you don't want to do that, there's a nice undo button up the top corner, so click that, and you, you could maybe move it to the sideboard, or whatever you need to do to get the model off the board. Okay, so thanks for watching, and in the next video I'll run through how to work with the cards.